To one of our headline stories, suspended national chairman of the new patriotic party, Paul Afoko, has described processes which led to his suspension as illegal. Contrary to the constitutional requirements, regrettably, a few of our members bent on overturning the decision of the party in Tamale perpetrated the following. One, baseless petitions, I repeat, baseless petitions were sent directly to the National Disciplinary Committee by the Council of Elders and two separate others from individual members of the same Council of Elders. Two, the Disciplinary Committee, without any referral from the National Council, illegally invoked its own jurisdiction. What makes this worse is that some members of the Council of Elders from which the complaint emanated against me are also members of the Disciplinary Committee. Under the rules of natural justice, some of the members of the National Disciplinary Committee are precluded for determining the substantive complaint against the national chairman as these members will be both petitioners and judges in their own case. I must repeat this for emphasis. You have a National Council of Elders that has not got the jurisdiction to even refer a national officer to the disciplinary committee. This Council of Elders, when it is pointed out to them that what they have done is wrong, then they quickly pick two of their members, two, and give them the same petition to go and petition the Disciplinary Committee, once again, cutting out the National Council. And especially to the owners of the party out there, the owners are the people sitting in their various constituencies. They are the owners of this party. And I'm saying that not for the first time. I have said that when I went around all the 275 constituencies of Ghana, I stated it in every constituency that they should understand that they are the owners of the party. I wish to state now that the decision to suspend me is unconstitutional. The National Discipline Committee does not have jurisdiction to determine a matter with the effect of suspending indefinitely an elected party officer from office, contrary to Article 10 of our Constitution, which focuses on the removal of elected party officers. This is also a clear breach of the rules of natural justice and of the provisions of Article 4. 5B. So that was the suspended national chairman of the new patriotic party, Paul Afoko, airing his concerns regarding the suspension. Let's go on the phone lines now and speak with Dr. Edward Bringer. He's a lecturer in history and politics at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Good afternoon, doctor, and thanks for your time. Good afternoon. Now, Doctor, we just had um, Paul Afoko who is stating that the decision to suspend him was unconstitutional and illegal. First of all, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, let me indicate further. I, I actually didn't hear the, um, as you were playing the tape, but I think I can still talk about. Okay, if you can hear me clearly, he did mention that um, the decision to suspend him is actually unconstitutional and illegal. Yes, I think uh, when the, this issue came up, um, we did indicate that Afoko, finally, in going through the internal process, was uh, probably hidden to the, um, the decision of the court when interested parties took it the court to challenge the legality of that decision. And I believe that he wanted to go through the internal process so that he could make his case out. Uh, whether, when we talk about the constitutionality and legality of this, I think the NPP has their own um, laws that guide 
some of those decisions. Uh, I think uh, Apopo was duly elected by the people. The leadership is saying that it's asked to not conform to what the party um, rules and laws require. These are two parties that are involved. Afoko claiming that he thought he was doing the right thing. The leadership saying that he wasn't doing the right thing. I think now it has to be the, uh, the law court who look at the constitution, the rules of MPP to make a judgment. And I, I foresee Afoko claiming that uh, friend, and I'm not surprised that he's doing that. Now, ending, you're mentioning that you're not surprised that he's doing that. He has been suspended by the party. Some members of the party think that this is a breath of fresh air for the party as they move towards 2016, the 2016 general elections. Could this action he's taking and probably lead to or, or cause doom for the party? I've always said that. I said that um, I've, in many of the interviews that I did, I've asked the leadership of the MPP to consider what occurred when there was this move to pass the vote on non-confidence, which the, I mean, the laws of NDC provide for in Afoko on, on uh, Community Japan. If you look at the two of the parties that NDP won in the last election, 2012, I mean, two of the regions that NDP won in the 2012 election, Ashanti region and Bunahafu could not pass that vote of non-confidence. I think that should send a message, that should have sent a message to the leadership that whatever it is, these guys still have some support within the party. I don't see why there is this thought about once a focal is uh, kicked out of the party, that is going to have a, a sort of peace to run 2016 election. I think that it's going to create problems. A focal is not just going to go and leave the party like that. If he was going to do it, he would have done it long ago. Mm. He's going to fight until he sees his rights are uh, protected by both the law calls and the, um, what you say, the laws of the NPP. And in doing that, that is going to create some sort of, uh, if you wish, worry for his supporters. And that may eventually cause the MPP. I think at this time, the MPP should be looking at how to build bridges so that they can actually bring all parties on board, not to be creating more division and cracks in the party. And would you think, or do you think that his approach is actually the best way, looking at um, how shaky the party is now? I think Afoko says something that I want to commend him for. Knowing that he was going to go to the court, he did not initially go to the court. Others went to court on his behalf. Then they were told that a focus should have used the internal processes. He has done it. Now he has a case to go to court. Because then the law court cannot tell him that he has to go back to the MPP because he has already done it. So I think in terms of legality, yes, he's in the right thing. All right, well, thank you very much, Dr. Edward Brinya. He's a lecturer in history and politics at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology.